everyone. Welcome back to another Read with Miss K. Today we have a hilarious story for you from The World's Worst Children, written by David Walliams. The story we are reading today is about a boy named Peter. And his story, you might remember from my last clues that I gave away or told you about, his story is called Peter Picker. So let's see what this is all about. Some children like to blow their nose. Some like to pick. Peter was a picker. The boy always had a finger up his nose, sometimes two, one in each nostril. The buried treasure he was searching for of purest green, snot. Although he was short for his age, Peter Picker could pick an extensive and seemingly, seemingly endless supply of it. Runny snot, gloopy snot, hard snot, snot balls, snot icicles, snot stalactites, snot stalagmites. He was a lord of all that was green and slimy. After picking, the boy would give his latest morsel of snot a quick inspection and then add it to his ball of bogeys. He'd read in a book of world records that the biggest ever bogey recorded was produced by a rather hefty German girl named Fräulein Schleim. Hers was the size of a cannonball and weighed as much as a medium-sized pig. Propelled by the idea that he too could earn a place in the book of world records, Peter Picker set about attempting to smash his rival's effort. He was determined to produce the bogey to end all bogeys, a gargantuan ball of snot. He'd started with just one ordinary medium-sized bogey. However, once he'd stuck bogey after bogey to it, it became a super bogey, then a mega bogey. Finally, it progressed to being an ultra bogey. Now, every time the boy picked his nose, which was at least every few seconds, he added to it. When Peter started, it was just the size of a pea, but with each new green globule, it grew. Soon it was the size of a conker, then a melon, then a football, then a snowman. The boy became so focused on entering the school record books that he often bunked off school so he could just spend all day picking his nose. At first, Peter was able to carry this ball of snot around with him. When it became too big and heavy, the boy simply rolled it along the street. However, one morning on the way to school, Peter had accidentally run over his neighbour's cat, Ginger, and the poor creature had become embedded in the snot ball. Meow! The bogey was so sticky, Peter had to shave the cat's head off to remove it. Meow! Now the boy kept the sphere of snot safe in his bedroom. By the time of this story, the sphere of snot, or snot sphere for short, was the size of an asteroid. It looked like it had come from outer space too. A kaleidoscope of greens, light green, dark green, green green, not so green green. But with new bogies being picked, licked and flicked onto it by the minute, Peter's snot sphere was becoming too big even for his bedroom. The boy's bed and wardrobe were crushed by the size and weight of his truly evil-looking ultra bogey. One morning, while rooting around at his nostril, Peter found a particularly large booger. Without a second thought, he whipped it off, wiped it onto the snot sphere. But this was one final piece too many. The boy heard a buckling sound, twang! It was the floorboards creaking under the enormous weight of the ultra bogey. Peter raced out of his room and downstairs to the kitchen. Looking up at the ceiling, he saw cracks shooting across it. Then, before Peter could pick his nose again, the snot sphere crashed down through the ceiling and landed next to him. Ah! screamed the boy as dust and debris covered him. Peter had very nearly been killed by his own mucus. And it was on a roll now, literally, and heading straight for the boy. Peter dashed out of his house, but the snot sphere smashed through the front wall and chased its creator down the street. Peter's parents stared down from their bedroom window. Their mouths were wide open, but no sound came out. Such was their shock at the scene. Being made of compacted bogies, the snot sphere was incredibly sticky. As a result, it picked up everything in its path as it rolled. A little dog, an old lady who was walking said little dog, a bicycle, a boy riding said bicycle, a lawnmower, a gardener using said lawnmower. But soon all of these things and more were spinning widely down the road, stuck in the snot sphere. Peter's bogey was growing bigger and bigger. The bigger the bogey became, the faster it rolled. As Peter kept running and running and running away from it, the snot sphere picked up a post box and uprooted a tree. Even a car became stuck to it. When the ever-growing snot sphere rolled on top of a bus full of people and managed to glue itself to the roof, Peter really began to panic. As the people on the bus spun round and round like visitors to some nightmarish snot-themed amusement park, 
the boy realised he was running for his life. Now the snot sphere was so huge, it was picking up houses as it rolled. First a bungalow, then a large family home. What with the house, the bungalow, the bus, the car, the tree, the post box, the lawnmower, the gardener using the lawnmower, the bicycle, the boy riding the bicycle, the little dog, and of course, let's not forget the old lady who was out walking her little dog, all stuck to it. The snot sphere was growing at a truly alarming rate. Peter had a plan. The only way he could survive was to go underground. That's where the snot sphere could not reach him. Up ahead, the boy spied a drain and dashed towards it. Desperately, he pulled on the grate with all his strength. Please, 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 he incanted. His fingers slipped on the metal. They were wet and withered from being up his nose all day. Just in time, Peter managed to pull the grate off and leap down into the murky depths below. Splash! The snot sphere rumbled overhead. Peter breathed a huge sigh of relief, which echoed around the drain. When he felt it was safe again, the boy climbed back up to the surface, covered in grot from the drain. Peter watched as the giant snot sphere spun off into the distance, picking up everything in its path. A fire engine, a parade of shops, even a herd of cows who'd been minding their own business, getting on with some quiet mooing. Seeing the mass destruction his creation had caused, Peter Picker decided it was probably best not to mention to anyone that he was the creator of this snot baseball of terror. With all that had happened, he was willing to let Fräulein Schleim retain the title for the world's biggest bogey. So Peter ambled down the road towards school. It was the first time he'd attended for weeks. However, when Peter arrived at the school gates, he realised his school was in fact no longer there. There was just dark patches on the playground where the school buildings used to be. Peter's spinning ball of doom must have rolled ahead of him this way and sucked up all the school buildings up into it. All that could be seen was a lone pair of Wellington boots standing where the dining hall used to be. The boots had belonged to a fearsome dinner lady, Mrs Slaughter. No doubt she and all the teachers had been plucked up by the mega bogey too. Peter smirked. (laughs) At least now I don't have to go to school ever again, he chuckled as he stood alone in the playground feeling like the last man on earth. Then, just as he was about to turn around and head home, or at least to what was left of his home, Peter heard a sound from behind him. It was getting louder and louder by the moment. A rumbling sound, a thundering sound, a deafening sound. The ground was shaking beneath the boy's feet. Peter gulped in fear. He knew full well what it was. He could barely bring himself to turn around to face it, but he had to. Slowly, he twisted his neck and saw that the great snot sphere must have rolled all the way around the earth and was now heading back straight for him. But now it was the size of a moon, and he picked up various landmarks on its epic journey. The Eiffel Tower, the Roman Colosseum, the Sydney Opera House, the Taj Mahal, St. Basil's Cathedral, an Egyptian pyramid, and the Houses of Parliament. All were sticking out of it like flakes in the Mr. Whippy ice cream. Buckingham Palace had been pulled out of the ground and rolled away too, exposing Her Majesty the Queen, red-faced and sitting on the loo. Peter screamed as the thing sped closer and closer. The mega bogey was now so megatastical that it blocked out the sun. A huge dark shadow fell across the boy and he felt cold. Peter closed his eyes in terror as a snot sphere rolled over him and plucked him clean off the ground. No! The top of the boy's head was instantly embedded in the ball as it thundered its way off back around the earth. But Her Majesty the Queen was angry that everyone had seen her on the loo, so she ordered her palace guards to fire their cannon at the snot sphere. Fire at will! The cannonball zoomed towards the giant bogey. Kaboom! The snot sphere exploded into pieces that began to fall back down to the earth, returning everyone and everything to their rightful places. Except one boy. Peter was still stuck in a huge chunk of snot. The piece flew through the air, only to land on top of St Paul's Cathedral. His parents visited every Sunday and hurled him titbits from the ground. Peter Picker remained stuck to the spire for the rest of his life, upside down in his giant bogey. Which, of course, what can happen if you pick your nose? Next time, have a blow.